playing in multiples. So the people typically only play one because of all the library manipulation that's available, although this deck doesn't have any library manipulation other than Bloodbraid Elf and Dark Confidant. Abrupt Decay, Lightning Bolt, him to talk, oh, for him, for Inquisition and Lily. Yep, that's our answer to uh, control and combo. GL with your Hand grip. disruption. So Mark, I like your Thought Scours, Soccer. Yeah, AJ just walked by. So, Gave a little fan of the face. 1v1. Ba is that Beta Tundra? That looks like a Beta Tundra. Good luck. Beta Tundra wins. Whatever. It might be FBB, actually. Oh, the then, text looks a little small. Then that, then who cares? Right. If it was exactly. Beta, that's one thing. But if it's just like, whatever, like a sure. Xerox copy of right, a Beta right, right. that's been like crumpled up, cut into small pieces, glued back together, and then Xeroxed again, weak. True Beta, strong. Yeah, but Kyle's deck is neater, so it's all right that he has the white border. Is this Inquisition right. Kozilek? Mark responds with, with brainstorm. brainstorm. So he could easily put himself in a position that he just has no target, right? It's it's possible. I find it highly unlikely with a Stoneforge Mystic deck that he's going to be we'll able to do out. that. How did you say Mark's last name? Ivasage? Dunn. Oh, Ivasage. I said it, uh, Mark's last name was Ivasage. I'm not sure. So... So he's gonna pick the lingering souls. That's I, I, that's the only that's spell. That's more or less that's the a, hotness. Yeah, I mean, four lands is kind of loose for Mark. He just put his he just put his spells on top. He has. I spells. understand, but he's only got one spell. Like he's not gonna have force will for he's, anything. He's in a flashback right here. But he's playing against Jund. It's not like he's playing against Storm. That's true. Like Kyle's big game is a fourth turn three two. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, like, you just block those with. Oh, look, and he's like, is that Inquisition back? That is Inquisition back. That is going to either get probably, Tarmog taking a Tarmogoyf. probably Tarmogoyf here. And Kyle's going to respond with, like, Deathrite Shaman, Treetop Village. I, I don't think I've ever seen a Treetop Village in a modern Legacy deck. Um, it's, not, it's not the most common card you've ever seen. It's certainly uncommon, as you can tell by the uh, rarity. What's the, the activation cost on a Creepy Tarpet? Three, right? It's three, yes. There's so, also a Raging Ravine in uh, in uh, Kyle's deck, um, which has an activation of four. I mean, that's different, though. That does 100 damage. Yeah, that's true. I, I think Treetop Village is pretty efficient. It's probably yeah. substantially more efficient than a, than a, a Creeping Tarpet. Yes. And people are glad the Creeping Tarpet. Well, Creeping Tarpet's unblockable. So I mean, it's an actual win condition. A three-three trample is like. Well, that gets stonewalled by a nimble mongoose. I mean, ish. They battle. They battle. They, it's not a win dies, condition if there's a creature death. in play. You know what I mean? I've actually seen um, <coughs> celestial colonnade in Legacy. Really? Yeah. Guys ten, have got like six spare land. Yeah. Like, ten K champion uh, Adam Prozac is a big fan of uh, celestial colonnade in his uh, oh, in his yeah. blue white control decks. Mark with the no spells is like, I really would have taken that Dark Confidant if given the opportunity. Yep. Um, Off the top from Kyle, though. But you Who know, needs Brainstorm when you got that yeah, on top? It's just the there. Just, I mean, let's see some justice, though. Like, Kyle's probably going to flip, like, what is that? Vendillion Click. Click, yeah. Main phase, Take apparently? Lightning Bolt, Take for Lightning sure. Bolt to be able to not... For sure. Right, to be able to just get some some gas on the board. So, Wizard Mirror Match, what are we seeing here? Doesn't he have to... Re oh, no, I'm sorry, he's he clicking. He did already, okay. yeah. Looking and then this is reveal. not the game that Mark wants to be playing. Woo! That's the hotness. Yeah, facing down a dark confidant with only a three-one flyer for his name. Essentially, a wasp lancer once it's in play. Not really the game Mark. What's up with all these Vendillion clicks? People, playing. these hotness Vendillion clicks. I've never the seen the judge foils. Yeah, I've never seen that art. Yeah, before. it's well. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why um, we don't see more of those because we see a lot of judge foil. Maze Viths and uh, wait, wait, is he really just running his dark confidant into that three-one? And is Mark really not blocking? Yeah, I think I think that both players. Well, Kyle must have just been in the mood to battle, and then Mark, I guess, smelled something fishy in the water. But when he did it, because he's got another dark confidant here, is why he did it. Yeah, but like Mark just had no spells. We know he has no spells. I. I could not have put my Vendillion Click in front of that Dark Confidant fast enough, I don't think. I think that this is the game that Kyle wants to be playing, though. Kyle's a much more aggressive... Like, Mark does not want to race with his deck. And so 
Kyle has put him in a position where he has to try to race because he's like, I got these dark confidants for you to try and deal me damage. I actually think Mark has... Mark's deck in general. Now, the position he's in is fine because he's got these lingering souls and he's got some flyers. And then Stoneforge. I think Mark's... Mark's in a good position. Where did what these he ended spells up come from? Yeah, exactly. So it's got to be better style, right? Um, probably. I imagine. Oh, no. Oh. Protection from your deck. I like it. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, I mean, Kyle's going to draw <laughs> three cards here, so... Yeah, so we'll see, but... <clears throat> so, uh, he doesn't have Bonfire of the Damned, does he? That would be sweet no. right here. Bonfire, Bonfire of the Damned and uh, Bloodbraid Elf, not exactly the yeah. best of friends. Just saying he doesn't have it. All right, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. reveal number one... Land. Sweet. Reveal number two. Land. Sweet. Actually, but kind of not yeah, sweet. Not really that sweet. You would have preferred to have a lightning bolt there. Decay, something like that. Draws unknown. It looks like another land, actually. That's actually atrocious. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <coughs> um, there's no, no good attack at all. Removes a land. Produces a McMana. Four. Is this Bloodbraid? This looks like Bloodbraid Elf. Yep. Bloodbraid Elf. What do we got? Two. Another death rate. Uh -oh. Not the greatest. Uh oh. It was okay. It's not terrible. I mean, sort of feast and famine is a sort of feast and famine is a thing. To be fair, it's like a thing. Yeah. And that thing is going to be in play next turn, thanks to the Stoneforge Mystic activation, or well, another probably. land, but probably the Stoneforge Mystic activation. So, Mark. He's gonna put that into play, equip up, I don't know, presumably Vendillion style, maybe one of the tokens. I, I would imagine it's a Vendillion Smash. Clip. Actually, he could actually just hard cast it, put it on the put it on the Stoneforge Mystic, and then just rumble. He's yeah. like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight in. Two turn clock. I think that you're right. I think yeah. that's what he's gonna do here. And then like untap all of his lands? Yep, and then untap all his lands. I yeah, think that hard casting it, the only way it makes... Well, okay, no. fine. We put it on a token. So we're going to leave some stuff back to block. Oh, uh, so, like, like, he has the threat, for example, of just, like, dropping a batter style in the middle of combat if he has it. Yes. Which would be... Which would be pretty nice. The hotness. I would actually move that. Yep, so he's he's moving the the, the artifact. Um, to be able to save his token. So 15 all, is that is that a true story? It, Number one. No, it is not Woo! a true story. So Abrupt Decay is a pretty good one. I love it takes out that sword that's uh, going to be a problem. Scavenging I love it. Ooze also very good here. And then, but I mean, he's at seven now. He is at seven now. But and just so, str straight draws. Well, he's going to rumble in with these Dark Confidants. One of them is probably going to get torn gonna, up, right? Yeah, he needs, he needs one of them to, to, to bite, the, bite the dust, most likely. One of them is going to bite the dust. One of them is going to deal damage, I would imagine, if he does. So, I think he's probably going to open up on killing the equipment so that he doesn't get... He does have seven mana. Though. So he doesn't get punked. This turn, because there's two fetch lands left. Well, he needs... He Unless needs to deal some are... damage. Like, yeah, he, he has, needs to start Because he's, know, he's rumbling. dead-ish. I mean, he can just gain life with the with the Deathrite Shamans. But he does need to get yeah. one of his one of his Dark Confidants killed, probably. I mean, he should push... 3-2, two, 2-1, two, two, one, two, one, I think. These guys should all be in the red zone. He also still has a land drop yet to make, I believe. So he could put Mark on 8 here. Or Mark's... I don't know if Mark takes or not. I think Mark should just take, actually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. Puts him on 8. But Mark's blowback is... 3, 5, 7 in the air. Kyle stays alive on Deathrite Shaman. It's not, yeah. a big, not a big deal. It's like a dead Tarmogoyf. Double there... Dark Confidant games are certainly uh, edge of your seat moments, though. So is is Deathrite Shaman activated on a creature to gain two life? Is that correct? It is creature to gain two life, non-creature. So, or instance of sorcery to lose two life. Yeah. So actually, Mark's best plan is to just take it. So that if he puts another creature into the graveyard, it actually just gives another opportunity for Kyle to not die. Right? Like, there's a creature. That's two life. Ticks. 
right? Mm -hmm. So he threw the Stoneforge Mystic in front of the Blood Braille so as to not kill off either Dark Confidant. To have another but he doesn't. The damage he doesn't apple. need to take the. Th I mean, he just take the three. Yeah, he could have just taken the three. I think would have been a better play. Yeah, like obviously the Dark Confidant still might kill Kyle, but there was no pressing need IMO to just ship him to life. Yeah, agreed. Although, looks like a spell is happening instead, instead of the two life. Abrupt decay on the the three one. Unnecessary to do that now. The card can't be countered. Like, it actually would have been way better to play Scavenging Use first, I think. You know what I mean? Right. The thing is, though, that he's going to be able to gain life on his upkeep if he needs yeah, to. Yeah, sure. Well, and multiple as well, because he's got Scavenging Use. Yes. But uh, that's a bit less dramatic than the life gained by Deathrite Shaman, right? Right. All right, so actually he can, like, remove a land with Deathrite Shaman... To produce a G, to use Scavenging Ooze to gain life, Eot, right? Is that right? There's only two creatures. Any of these creatures only gains life on creature activations, right? Correct. Is, how much does Scavenging Ooze gain on... Scavenging. One. One, per acti one per creature removed. Probably not worth it then. Yeah. He, sh he should... He sh if there's only two creatures to remove... Then he, he should, should be gaining four instead with. of three or two. Yeah, yeah. it's like... Actu Current status is... Four coming in from Kyle. It's you gotta assume gaining four life is gonna keep Kyle alive right now, and he might be able to like toss additional creatures into the graveyard. Right. Mark's just gotta hope that Kyle hits like double Bloodbred Elf off the top, or like double Liliana off the top. So, looks like animating factory. Yeah. So yeah, he's gonna ship all of his damage in. No? Is it a lie? Sorry for lying. See, this is the game that Kyle wanted to play, even though it looked a little, you know, a little awkward for him because of the double, uh, double Dark Confidant Act triggers. Esper Stoneblade is not a deck that wants to be, you know, I, I told you, all if I in Mark, attack I would have blocked time. the Dark Confidant. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the game Mark that he would have preferred what, to one play. card? Two Esper cards? Stoneblade's much more comfortable playing a card advantage game, and when you're up against double Dark Confidant, you just can't do it. And so any chance you get to take a Dark Confidant off the table, I think that Mark Wait, graveyard should Graveyard creatures it. are... Stoneforge Mystic, Stoneforge Mystic, Mystic and Vendillion Clay. And, and uh, also Tarmogoy. Yes. So he actually should use... Well... He should not have cast the Scavenging Ooze. That, like, now he can't... Now he can't burn off of the... Off of the... The Snapcaster Mage is, is just live. Yeah. So he's gonna brainstorm here. One. No, what's? He's deciding if he wants to remove the brainstorm with the scavenging ooze, with the trigger on the stack. He already let him happen. Oh, he let it. Right? He let it happen. Okay, never he, mind. There's just no way that that. <coughs> no, that can't be right. Oh, he's trying to tell him to reorganize his graveyard in the correct order. The, because scavenging use is a poly ability that he can use on his upkeep. Right. So I'm thinking like he's just gonna put scavenging use in front of Mishra's factory, produce mana with uh, Deathrite Shaman, and then embiggen scavenging use and gain a life. Right. Yeah. It's gonna put him to six. He'll take two, go to four, then upkeep. He has to use both Deathrite Shamans in response to Bob Maher, I think, just in case he accidentally flips over like a blood braid off. Well, he certainly has to do one. No, he, I think he should just do them both. Yeah, he, I mean, he should probably do them both. So he's going to go to four. All right. Oh, he didn't do he either. He just doesn't care. Okay. No. <laughs> wow. Uh, that would have been embarrassing if he just died there. Yeah, like... Yeah, like, oh yeah, Deathrite Shaman, sweet. <laughs> that was living life on the oh edge. Is what he's that putting was. it on that guy? Well, he wants to deal a lot of damage. So he's going to use his Deathrite Shamans to Grim Lava. See, Ooh, look! There, see, there you go. Oh my, he's down to one, right? Yeah, he's at one. Alright, well, at least well, we're done with lucky. that. He wants to use the Deathrite Shamans to Grim Lava Mance. He, I don't Mark. think he has that much margin. I agree. Like... 
So that's a 4 4. He needs a way to take out this uh, play a Caster Mage if he wants to. Wait, is that what land is that? Twilight that's Mire? That's a Twilight Mire. Oh, we don't see that you don't see that too often. Nope. So he should tap all of his lands except for except for Treetop Village to play this the Bloodbraid Elf. He might just get a removal spell. Yeah, he might hit Lightning Bolt or Maelstrom Pulse. That's basically it, though. He could, if he sideboarded into uh, Pyroblaster Elemental Blast, he can hit those as well. <clears throat> Two. Uh. Has he got him for sure here? I don't think so. Oh, he has two Deathrite Shamans. He might just kill him. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep, that's that's. Oh it. yeah, Deathrite Shaman. He just had him. Yep. All right. That was living life on the edge. That though. was r real tight. Because he didn't use that the guy, he doesn't use the the scavenging goose until after he revealed the first card. After he 